Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Nick from Nick's Crypto Investments. Welcome back to yet another video. Today's video is going to be on Hive Investments. We got the fifth article, Medium article, talking about the tokenomics and the Queen's Law. So we're going to be going over this today. We're going to be reading it over together, kind of understanding the bits and pieces that are in the article so that we both uh, can benefit the best that we can. Uh, if you guys are new here, make sure you go down below. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. Uh, this project is going to be covered very frequently, much like I am in Thor nodes. This is going to be my second biggest holding. Uh, so I'm going to be riding and dying with this project as I am with Thor. Uh, so let's jump right into this. Uh, tokenomics and the Queen's Law. They give us a couple of definitions here, uh, so if you don't really understand the definitions of these, I recommend that, that you research them. They kind of give you a quick definition. Uh, it says, hello bees, welcome to our in-depth analysis of Hive's tokenomics. We are very excited to finally be able to share our unique methodologies with you and look forward to your feedback and our advancements as a DeFi and a service space. <clears throat> Kind of goes over how Bitcoin started and everything of that nature. Uh, joining the hive, it takes the struggle and stress out of benefiting from the larger economic revolution in recent history. Our team has a broad experience in working in many relevant industries, spanning high finance, regulation, technological, and financial risk analysis, engineering model, and crypto natives with repeated experience in creating successful projects. By bridging the sober long-term outlook of traditional finance with the exuberant, energetic approach of decentralized finance, Hive is well positioned to invest in the newest and best and upcoming projects of tomorrow. So pretty much what they're saying is they have many people on their team that are able to ana analyze many different DeFi projects invest in said projects so that it makes the treasury a bunch of money because everyone on their team has some kind of experience in some kind of field that will benefit the project in the long term. Now, talking about all the things that haven't worked in the DeFi space would require an article and all by itself, uh, which is correct. Uh, due to the incredible possibility for returns within the DeFi space, we have seen countless protocols blow up and then struggle to properly invest larger amounts of money, leading to a fizzle of their token price. The chief culprit of this fizzle is the high daily reward rates. By having high reward rates uh, or APRs, protocol revenues cannot keep up with the emissions, which naturally causes token price to decline, which is why we see Thor nodes cutting their uh, rewards uh once once we have thorn uh actually go like the thor holders itself actually take this reward cut on the 15th to 17th uh, after the 17th it's officially going to be in effect uh, well actually technically on the 15th it'll be in effect but uh once we see that go through we're going to see the price steadily start to go back up because thor and odin holders uh actually make up a, a bulk of like the you know the emissions so what they plan on doing is making sure they get it right from the beginning right so hive uh loki is in is playing a pretty big part in hive investments uh and he's seen how starting off with a really high reward rate it could really be detrimental uh because now they're trying to catch up with it um which is fine that 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 works but because they're actually keeping up with it and they're still doing investments in the treasury but he wants to make sure that they don't have this fizzle you know they don't want this they want all the revenue streams to be able to keep up from day one uh, and it gets pretty juicy when we get down here to the bottom um, and it kind of goes over like uh, a little bit of other things here that we don't really need to fully read i'm going to leave this link down below so you guys can read everything i'm going to kind of just highlight some of the certain things here no project saw the high apys provided by protocols such as olympus and the frenzy of investing that followed by introducing a capped supply they were able to fix the problem of hyperinflation but still suffered from massive downward price action due to their ridiculously high emission rates while reading this article ponder this what's the point of a higher rewards rate if the rewards aren't worth anything 
that's also right. I would, like I've been saying with Thor, I would rather have a $70, $80 Thor for the next 10 years than have f like $300 rewards for the next 8 months or a year, right? Because compounding over the, that time, I will far exceed anything that I'm making that year. You know, no matter how high those prices get, and they're not going to be getting at, like, five grand. So, it's like, I will be making more money anyway. So, I, I, that's, I, I like where they're coming from. Uh, the only way for these one of these projects to sustain these high lifetime rewards is for a continuous stream of new investors to come in, providing buying pressure and propping, prompt, propping the price up by balancing the large sell pressure from the high emissions. In this way, these projects share a feature with another business model that requires new investors to maintain protocol health and cover the emissions it owes, the Ponzi scheme. The preponderance of this model in the DeFi space has led to the minting of a new term, Ponzonomics. Uh, the more that a tokenomics model relies on new investors' money coming into the system, the higher the effect of the Ponzonomics. Protocols reliant on Ponzonomics may offer incredible uh, reward rates for the short term, but they are not sustainable. Uh, so, a lot of projects, Thor included, started out with very high rates, right? Um, so yes, they, they did have Ponsonomics, but they didn't expect to, to get the amount of holders that they had, and they quickly adjusted, and they knew they had to adjust, and they were transparent about it. So, yes, they are to blame for that, but I, I think they're going to fix themselves. And that's why I'm, I'm investing in this project because a lot of the people from Thor are helping with this project. And they, they are making sure they get it right this time. So I'm investing in this project. Um, and this is where Hive comes in, right? So our thought process, given all the uh, issues, Hive has kept a keen eye out for what works and what doesn't. This has given us invaluable insight into creating a truly sustainable operating model that maximizes value for both the protocol and our investors. Uh, there are several elements that go into this and result in a healthier, more long-lasting protocol. Firstly, we will not require users to lock up their funds and lose access to their initial capital because they will be NFTs will be able to sell and trade these on the market. Right? So Hive is proud to announce that instead of locking a user's investment into a node, we will instead allow the minting of a Hive NFT in exchange for HNY tokens or Honey. Uh, the NFT will act as the node and pay out daily rewards. The only difference now is that you will have a unique B NFT, which you can sell on our NFT marketplace whenever you choose. As a result, there is no ROI period to one's initial investment back. The NFT stays liquid, providing investors a sense of comfort and security. In essence, buying a Hive NFT is similar to buying a B beautiful uh, rental property. It's an asset that will appreciate over time while providing consistent income. Furthermore, as the price of honey rises, the value of the revenue stream generated by each NFT also rises, resulting in increased NFT value. This means that Hive is fundamentally res less risky investment than any node while also offering massive flexibility for your capital. Uh, the second way in which Hive is reinventing the DOS space is through the insurance of lower reward rates. So they're starting out very minimal, right? And we're going to show you the rates down below. Many DJs have been burned by investing in unsustainable protocols whose prices eventually go to zero. Due to their heavy re uh, reliance on Ponsonomics, the only investors who win, of course, are the insiders and those who get in early. Hive recognizes that smart investors are not concerned with the number of token rewards, but rather the dollar value accrued from those rewards. In other words, how much they're worth. So I'm really excited that, you know, off day one, you're going to be able to mint, let's say, uh, you know, three worker bees, right? And those three worker bees get your rewards and you can keep compounding. And if at any point you're like, oh man, I need, I'm in a pinch. I want to get my initial ROI back. But say though the, the floor price of these already went up because now the scarcity is coming into effect because there's only a certain amount of these that can be minted. Now you can just sell one of those, get your initial back, put that into another project, then start compounding again, right? So 
I think that there's a lot of room for growth here, and I think that they're doing it right, and that's why I'm excited for Thor to eventually get to this place when they have a node cap and when they can officially sell your nodes on the open market. But the thing is, and what's cool about this is there's way more Thor nodes that are going to be minted uh, into NFTs than there is Hive. So Hive is going to have a much higher scale of scarcity. So I'm really excited to see how this plays out because I feel like they're going to need more. Um, I feel like there's just there's not going to be very many. Uh, I'm kind of interested to see how all this works out. I feel like you'll be lucky if you get like 30 or 40 uh, when you see these down below. As much as uh, as much as such, sorry, Hive has chosen to focus not on a high rewards rate, but rather on ensuring that the price of honey maintains a steady upward trend. In doing so, investors' uh, profit is prior, uh, prioritized without the pitfalls of an ex excessive rewards rate uh, and the associated sell pressure. Uh, this also looks good to outside investors who may later decide to buy in compared to the earlier example chart of high emissions node projects. We expect to see the value of honey keep rising over time, making even buying and holding honey tokens a viable strategy for a small investor who may be incapable of purchasing an NFT. Uh, so <clears throat> a peek inside the queen's chambers, high yields and or returns on capital can be attained on treasury investments across uh, DeFi crypto uh, investment products. However, there is a limit to the amount of yield uh, that even the best of the best treasury managers can get without ex overexposure to high-risk investments. This is where high specialized model comes into play. We first modeled the average yield of a basket of varied, relatively safe DeFi products uh, to provide a base case, uh, which we could measure our model against by then comparing the outcomes under different market scenarios to this default basket, we were able to optimize the rewards rate for the Hive protocol. Assuming no additional uh, money being added, Ponzonomics, we see this pattern. Uh, Ponzonomics may delay the loss of value, but will not stop, with, uh, stop it with time. An important set of mathematical functions uh, that they have here will help with uh, help it kind of explain that uh, NFT minting. All right, so this is this is the juicy stuff. This is where we need to really start paying attention. Uh, there are three different tiers of NFTs, all of which can be obtained by minting with Honey tokens. Each tier offers important stylistic differences as well as differences in yield. We decided upon the following numbers by first making sure that our overall protocol reward rate average averaged out to 0 0.05 honey a day for an NFT while adding a gam gamification uh, aspect that each NFT minted is exciting and offers the possibility of greater gains. Each NFT is unique with stunning artwork and specialized traits. So I'm kind of wondering what specialized traits means but uh so this is kind of what they're going with right so this is their tokenomics so worker bees there's going to be a bulk a bulk of everything is going to be worker bees right so 39,200 of these out of the 40,000 are going to be worker bees you have a 98 percent chance of getting a worker bee with a daily uh rewards of 0 0.05 honey a day or a daily yield of 0.5 uh, percent per day Right, so <clears throat> I fully expect this 0.5%. That is that is a solid amount, people, okay? If you are pissed off that you're not getting a 1% like drip is, uh, so let's, let's see. Uh, let's, let's go over here. Let's pull this up because I can't do quick math in my head. So let's do how long it will take you to get your 100% back divided by point, uh, point 0.5%. 100 divided by 0.5 take you 200 days to get your money back so that that sounds like a long time right sounds like a very long time but if you take those rewards and now you buy a second one you're getting double or let's say you get you know maybe you want to invest or you get lucky let's just say you get lucky right let's say you get lucky and you get the two percent the queen and there's only 200 of those you are now paying off your nft in 50 days and with not only that you're getting a 
appreciating asset, right? So you're getting an asset that appreciates in value because there's a scarcity effect of 40,000 of these bees, right? Not only that, not only are you getting in a value of an NFT that you're holding going up, but the rewards that you're getting are going to go up because the reward rates are not over uh, the emissions. Like you're, they're not going to take over and they're not going to be overly insane the reward rate won't be too high so that will cause the price of honey to rise right i kind of worded that horrible so i'm very very sorry for that but you're gonna have an appreciating asset you're also gonna have an appreciating value in the token so that's gonna be going up so you're making money in two different ways and on top of that um you get a fucking awesome looking bee so i think that's just gonna be awesome uh I I really am curious to see what the price of these are going to be. Um, so, price is going to be 10 honey, then 10.5 honey, I believe that this is saying. I was just reading about this, and I was staring at it, trying to understand really quick, uh, but... Uh, we'll get down to this. Uh, we feel that merging two rising mega trends, DeFi and NFTs, into one allows us to maximize our benefits, right? Uh, I do agree with that. In total, there will be 40,000 Genesis Hive NFTs. The price of minting an NFT will increase by 0.5 for 8,000 NFTs minted as follows. So the NFT number 1 through 8,000. Okay, so th that that's what it means. So you'll need 10 of the Honey tokens to get those. Uh, you'll need 10.5 to get the, uh, to the next, then 11, then 11.5, then 12 uh, of the million honey tokens that the protocol will mint. The initial state will be 440,000 in the multi sig treasury wallet to maximize investment power and bring more honey to the hive. 440,000 in the multi sig rewards pool wallet, providing a long runway and maximum stability for investors from the start. 100,000 the team wallet to set aside to pay for compensation, marketing, and other costs around the protocol. Note this also. It, this note this is the only allocation the team will be receiving any allocation of NFTs for the team or the partnerships will be funded from this wallet 25% of the tokens in the team wallet will be unlocked at launch and the remaining 75% uh, time locked partially vested at 6 12 and 18 months 25% each interval so that's great to see uh, 20,000 to the time locked liquidity pool paired with 2 million in Matic for a launch price of $100 per honey by having such a large starting liquidity pool we will be able to minimize price volatility during launch allowing even the humblest of bees to enter the hive at a reasonable price so a hundred a hundred honey so it's going to cost you um a thousand dollars to get your first nft uh it's going to cost you a a thousand and fifty to get your next one uh i think i did that right no fifteen hundred 1500 to get your next one. I'm retarded. Sorry. Uh, uh, God, I'm horrible at quick math sometimes. 1100 then 1100 uh 11 Can I speak? 1150 and that wasn't 1500 either. That was 10,000. That was a I just, I just just stop talking. I really need to stop. I do everything in one take. So sometimes I just don't know what I'm doing. And I think it's funnier for you guys to see that even I mess up. <laughs> I mess up with numbers. And it's very late and I'm still sick. Um, but as you guys can see, it's a, it's $100 per token. So this would be 1200 This would be 1100 This would be $1,000. Um, that's a great starting price. That That's a great price in general for all 40000 of these NFTs. That's very doable, and if, especially if you're in Thor nodes right now. If you're in Thor nodes right now, what I recommend is you put around, put a, put to the side, you know, a certain amount, right? I understand that there's not going to be a lot of buyers that are going to be able to go in here and you know just drop fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, right? If you can drop fifteen grand on these and get fifteen of these forty thousand NFTs, you are, you are making it, sir. I'm telling you. Um, so even if you buy one, you are making it. That is my personal, that, that's what I have to say. Um, this is getting ridiculously long for no reason. Um, and I have a lot to go through in this. Uh, this. So we're going we're gonna to start moving along here.
uh, our revenue streams before getting to the number of themselves. We would like to reiterate that our queen has the final say on allocations. As with any protocol, we intend to change with market conditions in response uh, to events occurring around us. To do otherwise would be foolish, and that's the last thing that our queen is. So they have, you know, the right to, to change and, and go about things. Uh, with the eye to maximizing long-term protocol stability and growth, we will be allo allocating mint proceeds to the following. So 53.5% goes directly to the treasury. That's awesome. Do future investments. Ready to, to be deployed uh, to start generating some sweet honey. Please note that we will launch with over $4 million in lock liquidity for two years to begin with, and we anticipate this number being enough for launch in the short term. However, the Queen will keep an eye on the liquidity and add as needed. 40% goes into the rewards pool to sustain daily honey payouts. 5% goes to the team wallet, where it's then split among compensation, marketing, protocol costs, etc. 1.5 goes to the hive conservation, as we all know that they are actually doing real world uh, changes with the hive conservation. So that's awesome to see. That's from the minting proceeds, okay? Treasury investments. As treasury funds will be used to invest in on-chain protocols, expected yield... Uh Expected to yield profitable returns due to the sustainability of our model, a large portion will be allocated to stable and low-risk investments. The remainder will be spread out to medium to high-risk investments as well as expanding the Hive ecosystem. Buybacks will be performed manually using Treasury Investments returns. When done, they will be based on the number of factors including but not limited to overall market conditions, honey price, honey volume, Treasury surplus, etc. Sale tax. Most DAS models implement and claims tax, but we feel that compounding one's uh, compounding one's profit should not be taxed. There, therefore, we have moved the tax over to whenever a user goes to sell their honey. The sale tax will be fifteen percent, meaning that whenever a user sells their honey tokens on a decentralized dex, slippage must be set at least fifteen percent. This will not only help sustain the hive, but also stabilize sell pressure. This fifteen percent sale tax will be split in two ways: one third will go to the treasury, ready to be reinvested for revenue. News, and the remaining chunk will go to towards team allocation for future organizational expansion costs as well as funding reoccurring costs over time. I believe all this is great, so we're not going to have a claim tax. Everyone, you're going to have a 15% sell tax across the board set in stone, 15%. Okay, so that's awesome to see. Queen's tribute, the Queen's demands a portion of honey to be converted to a royal uh, jelly. This will be equivalent to a maintenance fee of 3 Matic per NFT every 30 days. So, three Matic right now. The price of Matic, let's check it out. So, a dollar 72 right now, everyone. A dollar 72. Three Matic per NFT every 30 days. So, what's rounded up to two dollars for goodness sake? That's six dollars every 30 days. If you want to pay it for 90 days, that's $18. Congratulations. That's nothing. Um, now, obviously, that accumulates when there's 40000 uh, That helps go towards the treasury and the rewards pool. So, obviously, it's good for the treasury and rewards pool. But for us, that's cheap. So, I'm glad to see that. Uh, failure to pay the tribute will result in inability to claim one's honey. Despite being a sm very small fee for each NFT, it will make a big difference for, for, for long-term protocol stability. 120000 Matic per month. Uh, the Queen's tribute will go entirely back into the protocol. It will either be injected into the treasury or used directly for buybacks to maintain positive price action. This is awesome. They are doing everything perfect right off the board. As mentioned before, all beasts will have the ability to buy and sell Hive NFTs via our future native marketplace. Keep your feelers out for a Medium article on this next week. Uh, so that's some alpha. Next week, we're getting another Medium article. As Hive NFTs, unlike Honey tokens, will not have a sale tax each trade would provide a royalty of 7.5% to the protocol, being yet another revenue stream. Of the 7.5%, when you go and sell your NFT to somebody else or trade it, 3% uh, goes to the treasury to be invested, 2% goes to the rewards pool, 1% go, would go to the team, 
uh, providing capital for long-term uh, team operations. 1% will go to the LP and 0.5% will go to the Hive Conservatory. That's perfect. I think that's awesome. Why we're sustainable? Sustainable at its core comes down to math. There are a number of ways in which Hive differentiates itself from other competitors. So yes, I completely agree. Primary difference in goals, many com uh, competing DOS protocols operate as a money wheel um, or have ponsonomics, right? They do not. Uh, token price equals earnings per token profit P over E ratio. So they do a bunch of ratios, right? Um, so the queen will always seek to, out, to help our investors better understand the crypto space from useful formula to the coming to the Hive Academy. So they will actually have somewhere for you to go and learn about crypto. So if you're new to crypto, you, you might want to be in this project just for that. We know that we can build greater value for all bees by creating the most resilient Hive possible and expanding our ecosystem over time to introduce further utility by keeping a modest daily reward rate still excellent relative to DeFi as a whole. We don't just increase the revenues or token price we can tackle larger projects better partnerships and do more good for our bees in turn this uh, increase in profits means that we can continue to use post mint revenues to ensure that our whole colony prospers our reward rate is long-term sustainability and as any experienced investor in DeFi will tell you sustainability is to the key to is the key to consistent success the tallest buildings have the deepest foundations. This is very true. There's lots more to come. And that is it. Uh, next article will be on the... Uh, next article looks like we have Post Tokenomics FAQ, Queen's Auction, uh, Super Secret Marketplace, the White Paper, Hive Academy, and Whitelist and Launch Strategies. So we have a bunch of articles coming up soon. There's going to be a separate video for every single one of these articles that are going to be nice, long, tackling everything within the article so that you guys understand it um that is my promise too i told you i'm investing in this project this is not financial advice i'm not a cpa please this is all entertainment purposes only don't buy into this just as i am but i'm telling you transparently that i am putting a at least ten thousand dollars into this project i'm i want to get 10 nfts and i will be happy with my life i pray one of them is not a worker bee and one of the other ones but we'll see um and i will be happy with that um so that is it for this video it's been a long one um for just an, a, a medium article so i will see you guys later peace out